Hey, this is Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. I wanted to talk very briefly about uh, trading and using tools for looking at range days versus trend days. Um, here I've shown a volume profile for the ES using the regular time hours, which in the uh, East Coast is 9.30 to uh, 4.15 in the afternoon. And I wanted to look at the price action for yesterday and um, talk about using the black box breakout indicator versus a stochastic and uh, what, what, which one you might want to use depending on the kind of day that you have uh, in trading and what you might want to be looking for. As you can see, uh, this was yesterday's price action, but the prior two days that we had uh, for that pretty much developed a range, a trading range that we've been in. And you can see that we had a high here. We took a gap down on Tuesday. Uh, we tested down the lows. We found some support. We came back up. We had an opening gap, tried to get outside of it, pulled right back down. And pretty much you can see we have set up a two day trading range here uh, where right uh, you would say that the trading is relatively balanced. So we have you know where uh, buyers come in seeing good value to buy and you can see where they think value is too high and they want to sell and you've got a sort of a high range and a low range here now looking at what kind of day may be in store for us uh, for and considering what tools I might want to be using in trading uh, really depends a lot on where I start opening the current day and what it is relative to context of the last two days. So if I've got, if I've got a two day balance here in trading and I'm opening uh, relatively close to being in the middle of this range where a lot of volume has been traded or right in that area without any big gaps, to, you know, 10, 20, 30 points one way or the other for the open on the regular time hours. Uh, in my mind, I'm thinking the possibility for this day may be a range day. And there typically are a lot more range trading days than there are trend days to be trading. And in range days, you, one thing you want to be really careful about is letting the market, you know, in, when it opens up in this range, you really don't know whether it could be a trend day that will escape and go higher or lower. And you really want to let the price action sort of settle out and get a sense for where trading is going to be and you can see in this case on a 15 minute chart we moved up for about an hour we came down for about an, you know another hour we moved up a little bit uh, we didn't break the opening you know first hour range high we came up a little bit and we pretty much developed what we would call a value area where about 70 percent of the trading volume has traded during that day and when you think you've identified a range trading day the right way to trade this is to look for escapes outside of value and trade towards value and towards the other side so in this case we had the price action look like it was going to escape and you get a lot of traders that start chasing this price activity thinking that we're going to have you know a break uh, to the short side in a big big way um, and if you're maybe a little bit more experienced, what you're really looking for and realizing is we've spent two hours inside this range and the likelihood, uh, given that it's within the range of the prior two days, is that we're going to start testing down. We'll in inevitably find some support. It'll get a little choppy around the low end and you really want to start looking for trading back towards this point of control, this red line where the highest amount of volume has been traded or if you're a market profile trader, the amount, the highest amount of time that's been spent, this time port of control, uh, you want to start trading towards that and towards the other side of the value area, which on a range day is really the trade you want to be taking. Now from a tools perspective, uh, the thing you really want to be looking for is what kind of tool that you want to be trading with. And in this case, when you're trading within a range day, a, an oscillator like a stochastic or Paul's uh, false breakout stochastic is really the right tool to be looking at uh, on lower time frames to be trading in and out of this area. You could use a MACD for looking for an oversold condition uh, after a relatively balanced. You can see the MACD 
that I've got here is relatively flat, right? So we don't have any big excursions one way or the other relative to this trading day. You've seen you've had you know a high excursion, a very low excursion, and then we started you know oscillating around a center point of value. So in range days, you want to be trading outside of value where prices are cheap. You want to be buying and you want to be selling when prices are relatively expensive on a balanced day. Now this is not to say that you know this move couldn't have escaped. You know, it could be news or some other activity uh, and what you would end up seeing is a lot more volume like in this area you see a lot more volume going off. In this case you had a sell-off but not a lot of volume relative to all the average volume here so it's sort of not a high conviction kind of move uh, that's going on. So let me switch to the um, lower time frame chart and in this particular case I now have not only the regular time hours and I put some time bands on here to give you a sense for where the trading range was. This again was yesterday's trade and you can see in the overnight session relatively balanced trade not a lot outside the prior day's high which is this green line or the prior day's low which is this red line right so we're trading kind of right in the middle of this range and the trade that I'm talking about specifically is looking at yesterday um, we had that high excursion we had the low uh, this pink cloud is the five minute time frame cloud and I've actually I still got the 30 minute time frame cloud here you see how the price action on the multiple time frame dot cloud is switching between green the anchor trend here the bottom line green the blue to red to green the blue to red it's sort of just chopping around really our anchor time frame that's another indication that we're in a choppy uh, kind of trading range if you go back in time and look at what you know trend days sort of look like uh, you can get a sense for like this day long red right so we had a departure away from this 30 uh, uh, minute cloud and we've got the five minute cloud here and we depart away from it and you can see price comes back touches the cloud back to the cloud back and away back and away back and away those are really good indications of strong trend days every time we take you know we get back to the cloud it sells off get back to the cloud sells off and you can see a lot of these breakout indicators work really good on the uh, rain uh, the trend days on the range days you have to be very very careful about uh, the kind of trading activity uh, that you want to take um, you want to make sure that the trading activity that you're in and the activity that you're trading in uh, in this particular case in a choppy day is um, maybe lower time frames or one or two minute chart for the false breakout indicator or ideally you really want to start trading an oscillator like the uh, you know false breakout stochastic and in this case you can see that trade you know kind of how it developed right so we have the open we tested a little low we tested a little high we came back in and we're kind of in a box range here where most of the trading was kind of in and around this uh, pink cloud and you can see when we had the larger excursion away from the cloud the thing that you really want to be looking for is looking at the false breakout stochastic uh, green arrow and looking for a confirmation of that trade falling away from a pullback and you had two tests of the low here before the false breakout uh, stochastic fired off and getting in let's say above this candle here was a nice trade with a stop down here above this candle is a breakout with the green arrow and you had a couple of accumulation candles in here was a nice trade that ended up going back to the other side of the value area and that trade was worth let's see 2633 uh, to the high of 2642 was about a um, nine points eight or nine points you know in a one contract ES eight points times 50 bucks a contract is a four hundred dollar trade and if you're really looking at and analyzing and understanding what range day activity is and how you should trade it versus trend day um, that you then you can get yourself on the right side of the trade and using the right tools for that trade in this case oscillators like the uh, stochastic uh, that Paul has here uh, are really really good tools and uh, knowing how to trade these range days and look at them carefully um, will keep yourself out of trouble and not start chasing 
you know, potentially these trades here to the, to the short side uh, that can get you in a lot of trouble and um, end up chewing up your account. So hope that helps. Take care, guys, and have a good day.